Hi folks, this is Derek, and I'm showing you the cover of uh, Tom Ferry's brochure from his conference, and I know it's backwards, but that's okay because the market's backwards and we have to learn to ad adapt to the backwards market. So this is what we all got. This is, this is our main takeaway. I filled mine with tons of notes, all sorts of things in here um, from the conference. So. Nice to see everybody. It's been a couple of weeks, uh, which is probably good for you, <laughs> but it's been sad for me. Um, someone let me know they can hear me because it feels, uh, yes, you can hear me. All right, Mark, thank you. Um, now that Alan Brown is on the call, I feel like we can get going. He, uh, is, hi, Alan, good to have you. There. Yeah, okay. Um, hey, Band club this week. We're going to talk uh, about the Tom Ferry Success Summit that a few of us went to, and that uh, was really, really great. Thanks, Amber. Got your chat. Uh, Amber, did you call in, or did the did the uh, link work, or how are you on? You can pipe in or just uh, chat with me. Anyway, um, it was a great conference. Uh, calling in, great. Okay, um, tons and tons of stuff. And what I'm gonna share with you today is probably gonna to be too grab baggy. I don't know how else to do it. So we're just gonna walk through some things. People will chime in, Alan will have his things to say that we can totally discount and so on and so forth. So, um, but what I wanna do, cause it's been a couple weeks since we've done a fan club, is go over some of those big sales in the company from the last couple of weeks and just uh, give shout outs to offices and agents that are doing high end business and, and uh, making everybody stand up and take notice of what we're doing. Two weeks ago, because we didn't do one last week, we only had two sales over 500,000 entire company, but they were enormous. And they were done by the same person in the same market, Connie and Greg uh, Kincaid, Connie Kincaid Strahan and, and Greg Strahan um, had two sales two weeks ago. One was for 3.5 million in Vail, and the other one was for 1.475 million. So excellent job, and Julie and Amber, I know you're Happy about that, uh, but great job in Vail by Connie and Greg. Um, and then last week we had a few more um, good sales. I'm just going to run through them really quick. Taylor Barker, who's part of Team Yazbek in Steamboat, $565,000 sale. These are all sales prices. Uh, Dale Beatty, who is in uh, Prime Properties in Grand Junction, $600,000 sale. Deb Sievers here in Sun Valley, she had a $575,000 sale. She put the thing under contract four times before it actually took. Um, so we're all very uh, proud of her for that. Um, Eileen Turner in Grand Junction, $570,000 job. Nice nice work, Eileen. Lee Callahan in Steamboat. Chucky, I hope you gave it up for Lee. She had a $610,000 sale. Fantastic stuff. Stephanie Reed Real Estate had three sides. They did both sides of a $1.035 million uh, ranch. And in conjunction with that sale, they also sold a listing for $979,000. So excellent work, Stephanie and Kelly. The big prize this week goes to uh, Shea Buxton Real Estate here in Sun Valley. They sold a home, sorry, they brought a buyer for 1.635. Uh, and so lots of good stuff in almost all offices, which always feels really, really good. And I know there's some big things pending. I know, Alan, you have a big thing pending in Montrose, and I think Bozeman has a couple that are uh, big. So. Um, good stuff as we uh, head into the last month of summer. Can you believe it? Um, anyway, let me check the chats, make sure I'm not missing anything, make sure no one's told me that my shirt's on backwards or what. I can see Jen Colson under contract. Whoa, Jen in Vail under contract for a big number. That's awesome. Good stuff. Okay, Tom Ferry. You all know him. You either love him, you, you, he's too noisy for you, he's too much energy, whatever. Um, the conference. Uh, I was lucky enough to go. Um, we had a few agents from Sun Valley. Uh, Alan from Montrose went, and then the Christie Reese group, most of the Christie Reese group from Grand Junction went, and three or four other agents from Grand Junction were there as well. And um, tons of energy. You walk into the thing, it was in Anaheim, so you're already feeling giddy because of Disneyland. You walk in, and the lights and the music, and you're like, am I at a club? Jimmy, you know, give me an amen on this. It was like a club atmosphere. Just, and you, you can't help but start getting enthused. And to even start the thing, we all had to jump up and stuff. Alan had to take a break after four jumps and just, <laughs> I was worried about him. But the energy was, stop it, Alan. The energy was so big and so enormous. And uh, if you've watched any Tom Ferry video, you know that's how he presents. And his whole idea is that the energy 
you bring to a conference or to a listing appointment or to your clients or whatever, that's going to make things happen. We all know if you go in like Eeyore or Snuffleupagus or, or whatever, um, the, uh, okay, that you're not going to get the job done in the same way. Same with being in fan club. If I was here sort of morose and everything, you're going to, you're going to receive that energy and not be good. So that was the first lesson without him even saying anything is energy, energy, energy. Okay. Um, no surprise. And over the next 40 minutes or whatever it takes to get through this, most of what I'm going to show you, it's, it's all words, sorry, um, is not going to be like, oh, I never thought of that. But isn't the beauty of these conferences that you, you go to, to reaffirm and to remember what it is that you're supposed to be doing, what it is you're good at, what it is you can be doing better at. If you go to these conferences and, and stuff is brand new to you, that might be a little scary. You go to these conferences to network, to, to recommit to what you're doing. Um, Godfather, you're making me cold. Is it cold in veil or something? You're in a blanket and a, and a fluffy shirt and all that? Anyway, so probably you're not going to be like, oh, I never thought of that. Thanks for sharing that. But I'm just going to try to share with you some of the highlights um, from the conference that I took away. Um, and not a ton of the nuts and bolts because – those things get a little bit draggy and they're super important, but these are more big picture things. So I'm gonna share my screen. And Alan and Jimmy, you're on the call. And let's see, anyone else that was there? Um, absolutely jump in with any of your own observations. And please, uh, if you have questions or if you want me to go into more detail about a certain thing, absolutely just, just jump in. I hate, I hate talking so much. <laughs> I do actually, I mean, I want you guys to ask questions and. I know, Alan. I want you to ask questions and be involved in this. Um, and I will send you this document. I'll pretty it up a little bit, uh, but I'll send you the document I'm about to share um, when I send out the recording. Okay? All right. So these are just insights that I took, and I basically typed out some of my notes um, going over what sort of the highlights from Tom Ferry and all the guest speakers were. So started out by saying, and this was great, I thought there were about 6,000 agents there. There were 20 countries represented. All 50 states were there and six provinces. Um, so that was, uh, I did not think that it was going to be that um, global, uh, but it, it was a very uh, eclectic group and tons of people from all over the world, which is great. Uh, some numbers that you either know or should know is that in the next five years, NAR tells us that there will be 78 million home buyers in the next five years. Um, so that's a lot of people that will be uh, buying homes, some for the first time, some just buying second homes, whatever, but that's a, that's a good number. We'll talk more about what the market's going to do in the next two years, according to the experts, in a little bit. These are just some of the intro numbers that, that Tom threw out at us. Um, there are 1.3 million agents in the NAR, in the National Association of Realtors. And he, this was a guessing game. He said, just guess how many did 25 or more transactions in 2017. And while we all guessed, um, I'm going to go ahead and give you the number. Only 3% of the 1.3 million agents, more than 25 transactions. That's 43,000 agents did 25 or more transactions in 2017. Why is that number important? Um, Tom Ferry and any coach's whole point is to make you busier and to give you the chance the opportunity, the tools, the skills, the confidence to do more transactions. So you'll see as we go through this that, yes, this is a conference, but it's also a three-day long sales pitch to join Tom Ferry Coaching, and it should be. He's a great coach. His numbers speak for themselves. People who are in Tom Ferry Coaching typically see a bump in their business. So he's talking about all these things with an idea that, hey, if you're in the crowd and you're not one of my coaches, you should be, and here's why. I just did a quick, um, a quick search in IQO from, for all of 2017. We had 30 agents or teams that did 25 or more deals in 2017 out of 168. And if you look at that 168 number and you go, well, I thought we had about 220 agents. We do, but a lot of them are on teams, so a team counts as one entity. I think that's worth the discrepancy in that. But that's 18% of our company. 18% of our agents slash teams did 25 or more deals in 2017. That's pretty cool. Uh, so we're six times the national average uh, in our company. Um, all right, so those are just some big picture numbers. Um, and again, we'll talk about what they think the future of real estate the next couple of years is going to look like. 
Okay, one of the first things they asked, and again, this is where it gets grab baggy, and you can ask me to stop at any point and elucidate or, or elaborate on something, um, but what I'm trying to do is just share what I thought was really cool stuff and things to think about. So for me, the first thing that jumped out after these numbers are the question, here it is mid-August. We have uh, three and a half months left. September, October, no, we have four and a half months left, sorry. What can you do to improve? What can you do to hit your goals between now and the end of the year? Almost everybody in the company has developed a business plan of one sort or another with goals for transactions, size, uh, volume. Are you not doing something right now that you can do, you can implement these next few months to get closer to that goal or surpass it? So the question, what are three things you can improve between now and the end of the year? I can spend more time on, on SOI. I can do uh, one video a week. I can uh, be more um, approachable or, I don't know, I can use transaction coordination to take some of the stuff off my plate. Whatever. Three things they challenged us to think that we can do between now and December 31st that will help us and our business. I love this idea, and this came up at the same time. It's you versus you. True, you're competing against all the other agents in your market, uh, but, but really, and this is true in, in lots of things, sports and music and art and, and reading and parenting, it's you versus you. I love, the, I love that thought, um, and uh, you can apply it or not in, in your own way. Uh, this is a word, and I didn't really know what it meant, but I wrote it down, and I'm putting it here because I think, I think I'm going to understand it, but the word carefrontation as opposed to confrontation. Um, and Al, I can't remember how it, was, how it was brought up, but what I think needs to be clear here with agents is that, yeah, you're going to be in confrontational settings, negotiating uh, price, negotiating with another agent, negotiating with your MD, whatever, but as long as you approach it as a carefrontation as opposed to a confrontation, you're going to be okay. The reason we get into confrontations is because we what? We care. We have, we have skin in the game, either financial or emotional, spiritual, and so thinking about caring about your confrontations will maybe somehow take some of the, the bite out of it, perhaps. I don't know if I'm um, putting it in the context that came up, but I wrote the word down early in my notes, and there it is. I like it when they do things like this. Like fundraising should be friend raising. I like those types of things. Yeah, someone have a comment? Yeah, it's Jimmy here. Hey, just to kind of expand on that, um, this this was a whole Jason Ferris when you know Jason Ferris lost uh, I don't know what whatever it was 150 pounds between last year and this year, um, but this was part of the you know. Jason last year was that, you know, pretty big guy walking off the stage and Tom, Tom made a comment to him, you know, like, Hey, you're going to lose some weight. And this was in front of, you know, four, four or 5,000 people last year. Um, that coupled with a couple other things, uh, Jason finally committed to dropping the weight and he did. And he came out this year in the suit that he was, that he was wearing last year. And it, it you know, what he lost, I don't know, 10 inches around his waist. He's lost 150 pounds, something, something along those lines. But the whole point of it was Tom confronted him from a, from a loving perspective, from a caring perspective. And so it wasn't a confrontation. It was a care confrontation when he called, basically called him out and said, Hey, you know what? You know, I love you, but you know, you need to do better. And uh, so that was a little bit of some of the context in the, that uh, he pulled out with uh, the care confrontation piece. If that helps. That's awesome. Thank you. That um, now I'm remembering that. Is that the Zillow guy? No. Um, no. This is the guy that um, Tom Tom called him all, all, called him out on his waist, but then or his his weight. But then he was at a listing appointment. And then the client that he was, he was listing sent an email to that was supposed to go to a friend of theirs, but ended up going to the agent. And the gist of the, the note was, hey, how can I, how can I think this guy is going to take care of selling my home when he can't even take care of his weights? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. So that's, that was the gist of the note. So he got that note, Tom called him out on it, and then he committed over this last year to lose a whole bunch of weight, and he did, and he looked great. Wow, so carefrontation, uh, that all speaks uh, really loudly, Jimmy. Thanks for the um, contextualization there. Um, and you can apply that in your own business, right? Like, 
you're in this business because you care about your clients, you care about um, the job you do, you care about yourself. That's a really strong illustration for how you present and, and how that impacts how your clients are gonna interact with you or other agents. Um, we've got a bunch of new agents in the, in the company right now, which is awesome. They're seeing the value we're bringing. One of, one of my things is to care front them with appearance, with what's your car looking like, if you're gonna go show someone what they're doing, what's your email tag, whatever. That means we care, but sometimes those discussions are hard. But the more we care, the easier they are, I think. Okay, thanks, Jimmy. Um, another thing that was said is that the world needs great agents, and I, I guess I haven't thought of it that way before, but um, I, I, hope that, I hope that you all think highly of yourself and the work you do, whether you're hitting your goals or not. We've got great agents in our company, and that's what people need. They need great agents. This all was part of um, the idea that everything is going to become more computerized. Zillow, Amazon's going to start selling homes online. Um, those aren't great agents. They might be great companies, but they'll never be great agents. And I don't think great agents are going to um, be attracted to that. And so we need to be greater than we even have been to combat these disruptors. And so maybe now more than ever, the world needs great agents to, to push against all that computerization of it. And so the question then is, are you a great agent? If you're at the Tom Ferry Summit, you want to be a great agent. Are you there yet? In what ways are you great? In what ways are you not? I think this is helpful for anyone in my teaching career. We would always do this with the kids and with other teachers. What are you great at? Make sure you know what you are great at. Oh, I'm a good agent. No, that's up here. What are the things that you are great at? And make sure that those are part of your, your value proposition. Make sure that those are part of your branding. That, because as you'll see, we're going through here, it was all talk about differentiation, distinction, personalization, customization, branding. So make sure you know what you're great at and don't be afraid to tout that stuff. Okay? Um, and in what ways are you not? We talked about this before. Sometimes worrying about what you're not good at is a waste of time because you're not going to get good at that in your 30s and 40s and 50s. But to be aware of it, is really helpful okay so um, anyway again these are not like I'm not giving you stuff to go and get listings necessarily I'm giving you big picture stuff um, and hopefully you can take the big picture stuff and see how it applies to your to the nuts and bolts of your business this I thought was really fascinating I'm not sure I agree with it yet but we talked a lot about identity uh, in the market in 2018 everybody needs identity but Tom uh, spent a lot of time talking about how identity leads to beliefs which leads to behaviors. And where I'm struggling with it still, and maybe someone, whether you're at the conference or not, can help me with this, is I would, I would have those first two terms changed. I would say beliefs lead to your identity, which leads to your behavior. But Tom was adamant about it. it's identity first. You create, you, you decide your identity, and your beliefs come from that. And then, of course, your behaviors follow. That piece makes sense to me. Um, at any rate, there was a lot of talk about identity. Because as these big corporations come in and try to be real estate agents, Zillow and Amazon, A and Z, let's, let's just say A and Z from now on, um, our identity matters even more in the face of that. Okay, so even though we work for a big corporation, one of the biggest real estate companies in the world with 90,000 agents, um, our individual identity matters in our local markets. So thinking about the world needs great agents, are you a great agent, what is your identity how are you maximizing your greatness in your market so that your SOI and anyone else out there knows uh, what you're really good at? So being innovative with your identity. Um, what could that mean to be innovative with your identity? Does it mean you do videos? Does it mean that you um, are, are finding different avenues of, of promotion? Um, are you doing things with your SOI that are innovative that no other agent would be doing, sending sales reports on a regular basis? So um, everything you do does tie back to your identity. So make sure that what you're doing uh, feels innovative and feels with the times and that it, it distinguishes you from all the rest. Again, you know all this stuff. Here's three ways to change your identity, which isn't to say create an inauthentic identity, but to improve who you are, how you identify your, with yourself. You change your identity through association. And what that means is the people you hang out with impact your identity. Tom's example was uh, the people he works out with are super driven, super motivated. 
And when he goes and works out, it makes him more better as a, as a, as a physical person because of who he's associating with. And that leads also to the physical action. Your identity is created by your physical action. Rick is in here. He's in, uh, I think, a tennis outfit. He's got a sweatband on. It's physical action. That's part of his identity. He's out there, right? <laughs> he's doing those things. That's all part of it. And pouring in information, taking, going to conferences, doing your CE, reading books, mining the good stuff from all the experienced agents in your market and in your office, using your MDs and your OMs as, as coaches and as people that can give you more information, so on and so forth. So uh, those are three ways to change your identity. I don't know why that's right there, but anyway, it came on the heap. Some, somehow this showed up here. Uh, how are you creating a name and identity and exposure for yourself, even with your SOI? You think they know you, but SOI is fickle and the wind blows one way and a new agent comes along, they're gonna glom onto them. Make sure you don't give your SOI any reason to look anywhere else for their agent. And you do that because you're an authority, you send them monthly reports or weekly reports, you're in touch with them beyond just saying, change your clock, which you don't need to do anymore because every phone does that. So make sure that your uh, identity is staying strong with the most important people in your book of business. Uh, this came up, I think I put this on our Facebook post, three books that came up. And again, you're gonna get all this printed out, this, this uh, sheet, so you don't have to write this stuff down. But these are three books that Tom mentioned, or someone mentioned, Selling the Invisible, Soft Selling in a Hard World, and Never Split the Difference. Um, so these two are not necessarily real estate based, but the Split the Difference one is. Keith swears by this book. Keith Everett, our MD in Grand Junction, thinks it's one of the very best, so I hope that's on your short list. I know, this is like, oh, dude, you're killing me. Just stop talking, let me read. Uh, I'm not sure how else to do this. I wanna give you the information, and so we only have 20 more minutes before you, I'll oh, shut up. Lean into innovation, I guess. Uh, all business is innovation and marketing, said Peter Drucker. So if you think of yourself as an innovator, what are you gonna do different? You're always separating yourself from everybody else out there. Lean into that. So do the thing differently and then make sure people know about it. That's the innovation, that's the marketing. And then this is make things as easy as possible for you and for your clients. One of the reasons people come back to, to businesses or whatever is because it was easy. You know that ad campaign run by, was it Office Depot or Office Max? Staples. Staples, boom, that was easy. In 2018, people want and expect easiness. We all know that real estate is one of the least easy, one of the least clean enterprises in the world. How can you make your business easier so that people say, God, when the testimonials come in, they say, they took care of everything. They made this easy. That should be your goal for your, one of your upcoming testimonials is for the word easy to be in there. Make your business easier for your clients and they will come back to you. I'll mention Uber in a little bit with regards to that. It was a great analogy in my opinion. Okay, these are, the, these are some big, big ticket items. Why aren't these at the top then? Because I just did this chronologically. I think this was the afternoon. If you can't articulate why I should work with you, meet a client, and not a discount brokerage in 2018, you're dead. You as an agent had better be able to, in no time flat without thinking about it at all, Talk to the people out there about why they should use you and not Zillow, not Amazon, not some, not Compass, not EXP, not some other place that's given the, the business for a lot less commission. If you can't answer that question immediately and authentically and with passion, Tom Ferry says you're dead. Because guess what, folks? This A to Z thing, this Amazon and Zillow thing in real estate, it's not going to go away. They're not going to give it two years of a shot and say, oh, boy, that hmm, didn't get it. No. You have to be able to tell them what your value, your value proposition is, what makes you different from everybody else. I, you know what I use when I go on listing appointments here now, I try, I tell them that we, we're the, one of the only companies here in town that actually hire professional photographers to take pictures of your house. And that makes a huge difference on the internet when people are searching for houses on Zillow, Realtor.com, wherever. If the pictures don't look very good or you don't have very many, they're going to skip right past your house. So it's the most important thing is you got to get, you know, professional photographs taken. So 
that's why I use those CB packages. One of the reasons I use them anyway. And I, I tell people, hey, if you don't end up listing with me and you list it with somebody else, make sure they get professional photographs done because you're, it's going to make a huge, great difference on the internet about uh, the number of people that look at your property. So that's one of the one of the things I use as my value proposition is that that's what we do here at Global Banker. Excellent. And one thing you could have at the ready at all times is a link to a, a listing that has unprofessional photography. Yeah. Because it's one thing to hear that, and it's another thing altogether to, for a client to see that. Let's say you have that listing presentation, and, and you're not sure that they're sold, so follow up that email, hey, it was great to meet you, and by the way, here's, here's what I'm talking about with the professional photography that you would get at, that you would not get at a discount brokerage. Send them a link to photos that look like they were taken from someone's armpit, and send them a link of yours, of your listing that looks good. That would be a huge statement, I think, and that's a way to articulate why they should work with you and not a discount brokerage. Thanks, Alan. Um, I'm amazed. Uh, okay, um, another thing that came up is that we all think, God, the market's so weird right now. What's, what's happening? It's just a weird place. You've got to get the word weird out of your vocabulary in terms of thinking of what's happening now. This is the new normal. Weird is the new normal, which is to say that the way that the millennials and people who are tied to their phones all the time and their iPads and, and et cetera, that's the way things are going to be done. Things will be done online. And if that runs counter to the above point, discount brokerage, you have to be an online presence. You have to be fluid and fluent with all these things so that you can speak the millennials language, so that you can speak the tech enabled cultures language. So, it's not weird that people do things this way, it's normal. And if you don't believe me, wherever you are, just go outside and, and, and watch a busy intersection of people for 15 minutes and you'll realize what normal looks like. Right, that's what normal is now. So make sure that you're not um, pining for the days of, of no phones, because it's not going where that's normal, get used to it. You're all part of it anyway. I see you guys all the time. Thank you. All right. And then this one was like the biggest piece of the whole week for me because we kept coming back to it. And the story of the three little pigs, right? The, uh, the wolves come in, so they all go make a house. And the first one makes the house out of, out of hay. And what does the wolf do? Blows it down. Second one makes the, the house out of sticks. A little stronger. What does it do? What does the wolf do? Comes and blows it down. The third one makes it out of bricks and the wolf can't blow it down. Here's the thing. The wolf is coming. Uh, in Sun Valley last uh, spring we had a, a government uh, accountant come and say look we're on one of the longest upswings of the economic growth since the war, since World War II, and those things don't last. We're at about 124 months now. We're about to go the other way. Not to recession Bill. This isn't get all scared and panicky, but the correction is coming. The housing market will plateau and drop because that's what it does. So the question is, what is your business, what is your house made of? Are you just riding fat and not having any structure and it's hay and it's been great? And God, this has been easy, like the people in the beginning of the, 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 deck, the century when you could sell something just by saying, hey, I got a listing and it was sold. That's a hay business. Is it made out of sticks where you have some things in place, and you know, it's okay, it's better than, hey, this, whatever's coming will take that apart. Your business has to be made of bricks. And we feel like at CBDP, from a corporate standpoint, that our whole job is to help all of our agents have a brick house. Alan, can you sing it? Brick house. <laughs> he was singing it at the conference. He's like, I'm mighty, mighty. I'm letting it all hang out. That was Alan, and now he's not going to do it? No, you're doing a fine job of it, Her. <laughs> you need to be the Commodores. You need to have Lionel Richie as your musical accompaniment for the rest of the next four years. You need to be a brick house. Yes, you do. That was one of my favorite songs back in 1978. I know. I heard that 17 times at the conference. Oh, I love this one. This is how I met my wife. That sort of thing. So, 
Well, what does it mean to have a brick business? What does that even mean? Uh, I don't know, but it's a good thing to be thinking about. I do know, kind of, and we'll talk a little bit about more, more of that, but here are the two points why you need a brick house right now. And if you've just been getting by by the seat of your pants, hay and sticks, in two years, you won't be able to do that. The market will adjust in the next 18 months. Is your business undis undisruptible? Um, in Sun Valley, it's probably going to be two, it's probably going to be 28 months from now because we're always behind the times. Resort markets, those things happen later. Grand Junction, Bozeman, Montrose, 18 months from now, things are going to feel different. It's a verifiable fact if you look at any kind of economic spreadsheet of things going like this. Are you going to be undisruptable, your business? You will be if your business is made of bricks. The market will discipline those who fail to discipline themselves. In other words, the wolf will blow down the houses of those who have not made their houses out of bricks. That was a huge message. Understand, folks, this isn't me talking. I don't know much about anything. This is me conveying to you what was presented to us by the experts in, in the industry. I love this, though. The market will discipline those who fail to discipline themselves. Are you a kid at school who needs discipline? Or are you disciplined enough where the teachers, all you do is good stuff and the teachers never have to worry about it? Okay, so I hope you're going to be the one that uh, does not need the discipline that it's already built. Here are nine ways to become undisruptible. Uh, of course, we're on the second page. Uh, I, I liked uh, the other part of the, the three pigs metaphor was um, that the, the, the first two agents would uh, run to the, to the house of the agent with the, the brick business. Correct. For, for, for forming a team, right? Uh, yeah, maybe. I don't, uh, Jimmy, do you remember? Or Al, do you wow. remember? Was that, was the team formation part of it? Or was it just like all the people that didn't have the discipline are going to want to be with the, the people that did? And they, uh, I don't remember. I think it was the latter, but, but building a team, I mean, that, that lends right there to, to building a brick house. So absolutely. But when is the right time to build a team? Or, We're talk or, 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 go, or go to somebody with a brick house, right, to, to join a team. Yeah. But when the, when, the, when the wolf is at the door, is not the time to make a team, right? Because then you're doing what? You're reacting. If, you're, if, if your house gets blown away and you've got to go make a team, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be really tough. You make a team when things are good. And I'm going to show you. This is nine ways, a great segue. Thanks, uh, Mr. Yazbek. Nine ways to be undisruptable. So when the, the storm, when the wolf comes, dang it, I'm gonna put this all on one page. When the wolf comes in, in the next year and a half or two years, if you have these things in place now, and not when the wolf is rawr, you're gonna be fine. You will be a brick house, you will be undisruptable. The mindset, this is my business, Alan, I, what I do matters, and that's about right now. The people that get in trouble are the ones that don't make plans because everything's going so well right now. The people that are going to survive, whatever wolf comes, are the ones that know when times are good, that's when I make my plans. Start, right. stop. Yeah, go ahead, Robert. I think the wolf's already here, and the people with the, the straw houses are already getting blown down. You think so? Just my two cents. Okay. Um, Heck I, yeah. Zillow and Redfin and the internet. I mean, that's the wolf, right? I mean, it's already eating into our business. Correct. And our commissions, right? It's a race to the bottom. Okay. So Robert, to the top. a really good point here. The way that Ferry and the people at the conference were phrasing it is the wolf is just a market correction, right? Robert's bringing in a second wolf. The other, the discount brokerages. That's two wolves. Even more reason to have a brick house even more reason to be mighty mighty uh stephanie and i were talking about this on the way back uh, in the airport is that and i asked her what's your house like and she said she feels like a lot of it's brick but that maybe the upper floor is sticks now whatever she's talking about what's on the upper floor the marketing or transaction whatever she knows it's not entirely um wolf proof yet and this is from, you know, one of the top five agents essentially in the whole market here. That's a great mindset to have. Not like, oh, I suck, but oh, I need to get better. Right? 
Okay, start stockpiling cash. Make sure you have no debts when it comes time for the market to correct and the wolves to be at the door. Apply a ruthless focus on your SOI. These are gonna be the folks, people. When the market corrects, what dries up? Leads, people are not out there like, oh, I'm gonna look for a house because people close ranks. So you will have to rely even more ruthlessly on your SOI to be your income producers. And if you do it when the wolf is at the door, hey, hey, this is, uh, this is Agent uh, banana, banana Peel and we gotta talk. No, no, you do it now. You set that up now. You tell them two years from now, things are gonna get a little bit different. What's our plan? Be in the driver's seat, be proactive, make them know that you're thinking of them ahead of time, man. There's no greater compliment to your relationship with your SLI than to let them know it's two years out, but I want us to have a plan. They're gonna hang up and they're gonna go, hey, sweetie, and the dog will go, yep. this guy, this gal cares about us. Because you're not trying to freak them out. You're trying to tell them the, the, the facts. You are the authority. You know this stuff. Trim the stupid spending. So no more um, lavish haircuts and all that kind of stuff. Trim the stupid spending. Some people are going to say, oh, yeah, that means I'm not going to do print anymore. Other people will say, oh, that means I'm not going to do Zillow anymore. Whatever. Tr find things to trim and trim it now so you can stockpile your cash so you don't have to trim it when everybody else is dumping it too. It's a stock market thing. Sell at the right time and you're in good shape. Create more forced savings accounts. You've been told this, I hope. Uh, there, there's lots of places online to go for this. What percentage of each of your commission checks should go to what? Okay. Try to have that plan in place. Uh, consolidate all of your debts. And you're all thinking like, I thought you went to a real estate conference, not a financial planning conference. It's all part of it. Tom Ferry said a few times, look, if you all think I'm just a real estate coach, you have missed my message. I, am, I, am, I, I care about you. And then I raised my hand, I care about you too, Tom. And then I was moved, I was asked to leave, but whatever, at least I got my point across. Get your lines of credit set up now. This is fascinating, I hadn't even thought about it, but as an investor or, and this can be advice to your SOI. Dude, you tell your SOI this and they're gonna be like, thanks. And when it comes time for them to do whatever, guess who they're gonna call? You, because they're obliged to you. You have formed not just trust and respect, but obligation, which is a massive motivator for who people deal with. Well, I really like this guy, but I'm obliged to them because they gave me this great advice. Get your lines of credit set up now. I didn't even know you could do that. Build your investor list now. Again, this can be advice to your clients. When you have the, the group of clients that you know are investors, have them build that list now. Same goes for you. So that you're not doing it when the wolf is at the door because you can't do things. You ever try to start your car when you're being chased by the, by, by madmen? That's what it's like. Watch a movie. It's like that every time. So it must be in real life. Don't start your car when the madman is chasing you. Uh, 12 more minutes, you guys. Part of being undisruptible is building a marketing parthenon. Par Pantheon? Parthenon. Yeah, like the Greek thing. It's gonna live, live there forever. It's not gonna use the same thing over and over, but it's gonna be so solid that you will be undisruptible when the market corrects. I like this, your income is in direct correlation to the value you bring to the market. This goes back to, are you a great agent? Think of it this way, what value do you bring to your clients? And this isn't about, oh, I'm a good guy and we have a good relationship. No, from a realtor standpoint, what value do you bring that they could not get from the person right next to you? That goes back to what makes you great. You better know what value you're bringing. Uh, business is math. Uh, data can be a part of the art. There's a lot of math people out there and there's a lot of uh, non-math people out there. If you're not a math person, you gotta figure out how to make math and formulas and numbers and spreadsheets. It is, Pam, uh, the Parthenon is in Rome. I guess they moved it. It used to be in Athens, but now it's in Rome. Thank you. Speaking of market corrections, feel free to text me or call me out anytime I say something incorrect. Uh, data can be part of your art. Every month you get the RPR report from, uh, from the company. It lives in IQO. Data, that can be part of your art. You don't have to understand every single graph in there, but that can be part of your art because if you know your market's numbers, you're better than 80% of your competitors. 
Oh, this stuff is cool. Online leads. Did this come from the Zillow guy? I think. I don't know. Online leads. Everybody wets their pants over online leads. And what do you do when you wet your pants? You have soggy underwear. That's all there is to it. Online leads should not be the focus of your business. They're, they account for, for most people, 2 to 8% of their business. Sure, get online leads, but don't focus on them. But here are the numbers. 3 to 6 p.m. is the highest lead flow time. Go into your IQO. Are your preferences set to receive leads at that time? And if not, maybe you should adjust it so that you're there for the, for the uh, for heavy traffic. Monday, Thursday, and Sunday are the busiest days for lead flow. Kind of a drag that Sunday is, but doesn't that make sense? You've done your yard work, whatever, you come back, you hear, oh man, I'm tired, blah, 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 and you look and you send out leads on Sunday. And do you, as an agent, have a lead follow-up plan? Do you have something? Do you have a campaign built? Do you have a, a system that you use every time? Um, that's part of being undisruptible. Okay. Uh, Tom, Tom Ferry had an interesting number, which I thought was uh, kind of out there. But it, you know, like I said, it's a numbers game. So he, he quoted, like, you have to talk to 40 people in order to make a sale to somebody. Right. What is your number? So he says you should be tracking every person that you talk to, whether you texted them, you emailed them, you talked to them on the phone, you ran into them at the coffee shop. I used to track my numbers at one time a few years ago, and it was like one in every 15 people I talked to, I'd sell them something. So uh, like I said, he said one in 40. I thought that was a high number, but maybe that's the national average. So he recommends that you try and keep track of everybody you talk to and see what you know, how many people you have to talk to every week, every month in order to turn somebody into a sale. Yeah, and that's where it goes to business is math. Uh, I went to one outbreak session, breakout session, sorry, um, where the guy just said, look, it's simple. I know how many conversations I have to have every week in order to, to make a million dollars GCI. If I don't have that many conversations a week, I don't make the GCI, and it's that simple. When you think of it that when you know your number is 18 conversations a week to hit the goal, then it's a lot easier than just saying, oh, God, i got to make a bunch of calls today. You can count down, and it feels good, like you're accomplishing something, like you're a rocket ready to blast off. Hey, this is cool. I like acronyms, plan, prospect, lead gen, appointments, negotiate. This is some guy's daily plan. He prospects in the morning, then he does lead generation, and then he does his appointments, and then he negotiates contracts. P-L-A-N. I like that. Maybe it should be plain. And then it's at the end, it's uh, enjoy, enjoy life. Maybe plain old. Okay, uh, we exist in an on-demand culture that values the following things. And think about your own, this isn't, this isn't a bunch of millennials talking. Think about yourself. Do you fit this paradigm? Of course you do, because you're a human being in the USA in 2018. We value convenience. Transparency. I want to know where my money's. I want to know what's happening because we care about that. And we value service. And we value value added. And I know I just said value two times in a row, but what that means is like there needs to be a little bit more than just what's right here that I'm getting. This is what people value. This is why CR Trading Post, Amazon, Uber, all these things exist because they they hit these four things exquisitely. Zappos. It's convenient. It's transparent. There's good service and there's value added. Is your business doing all four of these? Is it doing three of these? Are you doing two of these? Aim for three or four and you're gonna be in good shape. Uh, 33 listing attraction strategies. I've got them all right here. I wasn't gonna type them all out. I only got the 29. Um, at any rate, I'll maybe put some of those in, but I almost feel like that's too nuts and boltsy. And I also feel in a, in a weird way, you get mad at me, like the people that, that bought the plane tickets and spent three days in the sweltering Anaheim heat, get this. This is like their value add, right? I'm happy to share whatever. I'm just being sort of a jerk, but, uh, you know. All right. Um, ah, now Pam just told me the Parthenon. Oh, whatever. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ignore it. I don't know where the Parthenon is or the Pantheon or the uh, parts unknown. Listing presentation strategies. There was a great panel. Uh, the dude that sold the Playboy Mansion, Gary Gold, uh, dude that sells San Diego like crazy between, you know, 800,000 to 3 million. So a good middle producer in San Diego. And then a woman in uh, Toronto who sells, has 150 deals a year. Totally different markets, totally different approach, three different listing strategies. And this was an awesome, awesome panel. Think about these things. Gary Gold, the Playboy guy, he starts at the back. 
with his listing presentation. We all say, okay, here's what I'm going to do for you. You sign with blah, 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 A, A, B, C, D. He starts with Z and goes to A. Here's what we'll do after it sells. Guess what? If there are four other people that did the lesson presentation, all of a sudden he has done what? He has identified that he is different. He will stick out in the mind of the, of the client because he started at the back, which is where the success happens. He starts at the end. So the first thing I'm going to tell you is that when we sell your house, I will send out a, a, a letter to you know, all the people in Beverly Hills announcing the sale of it. Oh, wow. Already then, the mindset is success. This guy gets the job done because he's talking about the sale at the front. That's awesome. And then he moves all the way to the beginning. Uh, this other guy who is a cross between uh, Anthony Bourdain and Tony Robbins, in my opinion, just an enormous presence, unflappable, doesn't use his hands like some monkey in a cage, like some people I know. And he said, if I have to bring the a listing presentation or my iPad out, I'm not going to get that listing. In other words, if I have to use any of the stuff that everybody thinks you need on your listing presentation, he's lost it because there's no differentiation, no matter what's in those pages. And as soon as the customer leaves these and goes to those, his strength is out the window. His strength is presence, connection, relationship, respect, trust. That was awesome. So for all of us that are like, what do I need? Oh, I, have, I don't have this and I don't have that. He's, he's like, I have it. It's ready. It's always with me. I'm prepared. But I know that I'm not going to get the listing if I have to resort to that because it means I haven't done my job as a, as a person. This is all about relationships. This is all about people, people, people. This is all about distinguishing yourself from Zillow and Amazon. You do that because of these things and this thing and not because of all these things. I mean, you know what I'm saying. All right. Um, the woman from Toronto, this was awesome. She has her 33 page listing presentation broken up into single pages that are laminated. And she, sometimes she does all 33, like playing cards. Well, we'll take a look at this. This is what we do, boom, boom, boom. And then she can move over here, direct attention here. Isn't it kind of cumbersome to have someone with a book and they're looking through pages and you're trying to talk about one thing and they're already eight pages ahead. So she runs the conversation by saying, here, take a look at this. And the beautifulest piece of this, it was the beautifulest for sure, is that the, when the, when the uh, objection about commission comes up, well, this all sounds great, realtor, but can we do this for 2.5? She's got these 33 pieces or 28 or whatever it is laid out on the table. And she says, well, if, if we do that, this piece will have to, we can't do this, we can't. And she subtracts physically and visually from what she offers. And that makes a huge statement rather than saying, well, no, because I can't, blah, blah. It's a, it's a visual thing. And it, she says she almost never has to cave on commission. It was really, really awesome. She laminates them because they go through a lot of use. She takes them with. They're hers. And when you take something away, people want that, right? I mean, that's sort of a human thing. Oh, can I have that? No, I'm sorry. You can have it if you hire me. You wouldn't say that, but that's the effect it has. I thought that was awesome. Uh, and then this, all three of them spoke about the pivot. And I know this is a politically charged term right now. Um, at any rate, make sure you know what your pivots are at any moment in your listing presentation. The glaze, the guy who doesn't use any aids, he says, typically when I use aids, that's when the glaze happens. And you can see the eyeballs sort of wander, sort of get glazy, pivot. Stop talking about real estate, talk about family, talk about area, talk about dreams, vacations, jobs, whatever. Pivot for 30 seconds, for a minute, and then come back. But if you try to push through when the glaze is happening with the same stuff, like everybody's doing, like I'm trying to do right now, I know I've lost a lot of you because I can't even see your eyes. Find a pivot, okay? Boy, um, four of six. Okay, Tiffany Boba, she was awesome. She is part of Salesforce, tons of things. She had a great, this is, these first three bullets, I won't read all this. Customer experience is the battleground in today's market. It's not the product as much as the experience. Customers remember the experience, not the price. You remember your Uber ride, not because of how much you pay, but because the experience is good. Boom, it's on your phone. You know the guy's license plate number. You know what color her car is. You know her freaking name. That's an experience. That's why... If you go to an airport, everybody's using Uber. 
It's an experience. And she had the coolest thing. She says, I travel alone a lot in foreign countries. At least if I'm an Uber, someone knows where I was last. Wow, that was like, oh my God, that's pretty amazing. Um, you are selling change. You're not selling real estate, you're selling change. If you think about what you're selling as a less concrete thing and more of an abstract thing that gets to the heart of someone, maybe that's gonna impact the way you do your business. You are your product. Fascinating thing, real estate is one of the highest grossing uh, professions out there, and yet you have no inventory, really. You have no thing. You have your listings, that's your inventory, but you are your product. That's pretty cool. 67% um, of people will pay more for a better experience. That goes back to the listing commissions. You, you're, I'm worth this. You are gonna enjoy this experience with me, and I'm worth it. People will pay for the, the experience. Um, deliver wow, make your sales, sales strategy seamless and easy. Trust, opposition, brand. Ways to in, improve your brand or, or promote your brand. Um, okay, I'm running out of time, so I'm just gonna get through this. I've got links to all three of these speakers. Uh, Tiffany Bova, great, awesome. I'll, just, I'll put a link with this to, to a thing. Jay Abraham, he, his net worth, one of Christy Reese's groups looked him up, 33 b b b billion. And this guy, he looks like Martin Scorsese used to look and is just so quiet and he just sits here and talks like, oh, yes, well, here's what I think. And you wonder, is the guy, is he on drugs, whatever, but totally mild-mannered, he's worth $33 billion because he tells companies all over the world how to better do their business. And a lot of what he said is great. Here are some of the highlights of what he said, I think. And it sounds the same as everything else I've been saying. Differentiate, differentiate yourself. Become, this is a word, and I have to look it up. Become preeminent. Preeminence means surpassing all others, having superiority. And it doesn't mean walk around like this. It means your business, your product, remember you are your product, right? You are, your product is better than anyone else's. You know the market better. You know how to negotiate better. You have a better uh, relationship with the other agents. Be preeminent. Commit to being seen as the go-to source. Identify a point of view that is fresh and authentic. Tell the truth. That is your moral obligation as a real estate agent. It's always better to tell someone bad news earlier than later when you're in the midst of things. People will respect you for that. Um, Create a website that adds value to you. This was an interesting thing, and I'm not sure what we can do with our CBDP websites, but all of them say, you know, visit, uh, search the market. Well, there isn't anything in there about distinguishing you. His, his thing was, we specialize in blah on the head of your website. If you have a specialty, if you have something that will add value, that's pretty good. Be exclusive. On a given week, we have 10, we have access to 10 listings, not the MLS. Oh, shit, I'm going to email that guy. Okay. Uh, this I love, and as leaders, we talk a lot about this in our leadership calls and with my OM. Greatness comes through or by making others feel great. It's all about service. We talk about that all the time. If you picture yourself as a servant in the service of others, you're going to do really, really well in this business or most other businesses. Greatness comes through making others feel great. Optimization, hindsight, insight, foresight. Do you have all three of these? Hindsight, you can make sense of what's past. Insight, you can see a thing and go, okay, I, I, know, I know something about that. Foresight, I can picture what the future is going to look like. Um, here are the links. Here's the link I'm going to send you. Okay, so that was a lot of talking. Here's the bottom line, folks, is that the market is going to change within two years. That's clear to everybody, and it was a big piece of this. So is your house ready for that? Is your business undisruptible, whether it be a wolf, whether it be the other wolves that the Asbeck mentioned? Um, how do you get there? Well, that's sort of the teaser. Tom Ferry wants you to sign up for coaching, just like we want you to sign up for our own coaching here in-house. We will help you. Your coach will help you make a brick house, right? That's the that's the whole idea. I'm going to stop sharing now and see if anyone. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wake up! Wake up! <laughs> I'm back. Okay. Um, how many buyers this year? <laughs> oh, you are playing it, Alan. You're awesome. <laughs> 
I'm Monty Monty, and I'm letting it all hang out. <laughs> Robert, how many buyers is here? What do you mean? Talking Yazbek? Uh, it, was, it was the godfather who said, how many buyers is here? Oh, 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 oh. That's a question? Yeah. You were saying there are 78 million in the next five years? Correct. Right. Yeah. And how many are there currently per year or what? How does that relate to what we have now or currently or in the last five years? Um, I'm, uh, he didn't go into that, but here's what my bet is. And someone smarter than me can laugh and then say what they really, what the truth is. My bet is that um, it's going to be higher in the next five years than it currently is because I think more millennials will be entering the, the home buying um, world for the first time. I mean, you got to, like our demographics are interesting in this country right now. Baby boomers are starting to fade. Uh, you know, and that was our biggest population. The birth rate is going down. So you start looking at that sort of thing. Um, millennials don't have the same cash and real estate costs more than it did even 20 years ago, 30 years ago. So how is all that going to affect how many buyers out there versus people that are just going to rent for a long time? I don't know, but I, I'm betting that, um, I don't know. What sense do I make out of that? I don't know. <laughs> If someone knows where to get this information because you're, you're brainy like that, because data math is your business, please let me know and we'll, we'll get that into people's hands. Um, Carrie, are you there? Sirianni? No? Okay. I just didn't know if that was her arm there and she was uh, being, oh, okay. It's not. Okay. Thanks for that question. Um, what else would you like to know about the Tom Ferry Summit Success, Success Summit Conference? Hey, Derek, you, uh, this is back to the identity shapes beliefs discussion that you had, uh, just to, just to kind of expand on that. Um, he talked about that identity being who you associate with, uh, what your physical actions are, and then what you do to gain information and, and basically build your knowledge. So, uh, you know, association is who do you spend time with physical action? You know, what's your commitment um, what do you want to do in your life where you want to go with your life? Um, you know, how physically fit you want to be just, uh, your physical action in business and your personal life. And then the third was to, um, how are you going to change your psychology, uh, reading books, audio books, uh, coaching, all of that. Uh, and he said, set a plan for all three of these. That was the key is you have to have a plan for all three of these, uh, and that helps you with your identity and then ultimately your beliefs. And I forget what the third one was. Behavior. Behavior, yeah. Yeah. So that's a great um, clarification and correction, Jimmy. Thank you. So, um, and, and we hope, Cole Banker Sinks Properties hopes that our house is bricks. I think, I think that we've got a very solid um, house. And to Jimmy's point, I also think that if you're in our company, um, this is called fan club after also allow me to be a, a fan. If you're in our company, you're associating with really good people. I look at almost everyone on this call now and, and I know that our agents are associating with good people on a daily basis. We've got great OMs. We've got great MDs. We've got great agents and corporate agent services, ownership, great people. So the association is built in. Then it's up to you to figure your physical action and, and, the pouring in of information, but we try to make all that stuff available to you on a pretty, pretty regular basis. So, um, I'll stop, I'll stop stroking ourselves on the back here. Um, all right. What else, anything else that you were hoping to get out of this? I know it's been a lot of me babbling. I'll send this, I'll pretty it up a little bit. Uh, I'll, I'll put, um, photos of, of various agents on it. Um, and send it to you in a, in a digestible form, as well as links to those speakers so you can learn more about them. Super worth your while. Jay Abraham has so much to say. Tiffany Bob has so much to say. And you've seen Matthew Ferreira before, I think, talk about story. So really good stuff. Anything else? Anything? All right. Um, I do want to make sure you got the email yesterday afternoon. First of all, the 13% email, we apologize for that going out. 14 times or whatever, uh, it's a glitch in the system, Grand Junction making a, a training and it hit everybody, just ignore the 13% stuff. But what you can't ignore is that Tuesday from two to four, 
And yes, we'll record it, but boy, we really want people there. I know some of you have said you can't be there. Shari, you've already said that. Thank you. Two to four on Tuesday, a listing presentation cook-off, if you will. Uh, Yazbek will be in there. Uh, Stephanie Reed will be in there. Christy Reese, who I guess is an agent uh, in Grand Junction, she'll be there. And uh, Kelly Maves will be there. Four of our top listing agents in the company uh, will all be doing their best to impress you, Mr. or Mrs. Seller, that they're the ones that you should go with. We'll have objection handling role playing, and at the end of it, we'll all be able to, to vote. You'll send me an email to tell me who you think did the best job, and that person will, um, I don't know what, uh, get a trip somewhere or something like that. Anyway, please make plans. Tell everybody in your office Tuesday 2 to 4 because this is a place a lot of us are not as good as we should be in listing presentations. So here's the chance to see four masters do their thing. Uh, it's really impressive too because they don't have to show their cards and they're going to show their cards. Thank you so much to those four. Robert, I think you're the only one on the call, but I uh, really appreciate that. So that's Tuesday 2 to 4. Um, and so uh, yes or yes, you'll be there. <laughs> Remember that, Jimmy? Yes or yes, you're going to be there. Yes. What time at 2 o'clock on Tuesday will you be there? <laughs> Start giving the answers in your questions, and you're going to make a million dollars. It's true. Hey, everybody's awesome. Uh, thanks so much. That's a Lego theme song, actually. Thanks so much for participating and being here today. You'll hear from me either later today or early Monday. I don't want to send anything out too soon. And uh, keep up the great work, everybody, okay? Okay, thanks. Bye. Nice work.